Since we are dealing with the loops in C-sharp programming language, let's understand a situation. So over here, let's say I'm having this string value and this is the name. And let's assume here I'm having this value, Nitish space Kosik, and that's it. Now I want to display all these characters one by one by using any one of the loop. So let's say it is for each loop first. And this is what I'm having, console or right line. And here I'm having this, let's say this is name. And this is n n and here let's say this is the character value right you can also use the where keyword over here and let's just comment this line or basically display some another message like and let's say i'm displaying the message and okay let's run this application here you can notice i am getting all the characters one by one this is very simple and we have covered this concept in the previous videos now let's say here is the situation the situation is that among all these characters, I do not want to display this space value. So what we can do over here, we can write one if condition and in that if condition, we can write that if this character equal equal space, then let's not display the value. If this n is not equal equal space and let's just display the message over here, we can write the program like this. And if I will try to run this program this time, you will notice we are not getting that space. But there is one more very efficient way to handle this kind of logic in C sharp programming language. So let's just cut this line, put it back over here. And over here, I'm writing if this n is equal equal space, then use the continue keyword over here. Here in this video, we will learn about this continue keyword. Along with this continue, there is one more very important keyword, which is break keyword. So here in this entire video, we will talk about this break and the continue keyword. So first, let's discuss the concept of this continue keyword. If we are using this continue keyword anywhere in the loop, then the execution will come back to the starting of that particular loop. So first, let's just run this program and see how it is working. Here you can notice we are not getting that space, right? And just to understand the concept more better like this, let's add few more extra spaces over here like this. And this time I want to debug this program. Let's put three breakpoints over here and let's just run this application. This time the value of N is this capital N, click the continue button and you can notice this condition is not true. So we are executing this console load right line. Next, this time you can notice the value of this N is I, same way. This time the value of this n is this space so here you can notice this condition is true here we are in the body of this if block we are getting this continue button and let's just click over here on this f10 and you can see again we are coming back to this in keyword right what is happening over here we are not executing anything that is written after this continue keyword for this particular iteration it could be different for the next iteration the value of this n is t the execution will work just like it was working earlier. Let's click on the continue button and here it is. This time you can notice again we are getting this space. So this is how it is working. And if we are using this continue keyword, then you can notice the debugger is not hitting this particular line. That's the main concept. You can use this similar concept in any kind of loop. So this was the for each loop. Let's try with the for loop over here and in the for loop as well. Here let's say it is name. And let's just copy all of them and paste it over here. So what we are having, we are basically having this name of I. That's it. Let's just comment this for each loop and deal with this for loop. This time again, the same concept goes over here also. So if it is a space, then I do not want to display it on the console screen. Run it. Here you can notice we are not getting any kind of space. And if you will put a debugger over here, then again, just like it was having over here, if you are encountering this continue keyword, then the execution again will come over here in this for loop. Let's try this with one more example. So this time over here, I'm gonna go with this list over here. And in this list, let's define some values. Let's say it is, let's go with the integer values. Int, int, and one, two, three, four, five. The same concept goes over here as well. So let's say it is for each loop. And this is the list over here. Let's display the message console dot write line item. Let's say I'm writing the continue keyword over here like this. And let's just comment all these things. 
so let's see what is happening over here the visual studio intelligence is showing us that this particular line is unreachable because every time this for each loop will run we are having this continue keyword and because it is continue so nothing that is written after this continue keyword will work so let's just put a condition over here i want to write the program like this so if the item is one then continue otherwise display all of them on the console screen run the application here you can notice we are getting only two three four and five or for example let's say it is if i will divide it by two and the remainder is equal equal zero it means i do not want to display the even values let's run it you can notice i'm getting only the odd values one three five so this is how you can work with the continue keyword in the c sharp programming language perfect now let's talk about another keyword which is break keyword the main concept of this continue keyword is to go back to the execution of this loop but if you are having the break keyword like this then if you are hitting this break keyword anywhere inside the loop then the execution will come outside of this loop so first let's start the learning from the simplest example if the item is equal equal 3 then i want to break this particular loop and let's just display this message over here so what's the logic that we have written we are having a list and this list is having couple of values all of them are integer values then we are having a for each loop and we are iterating all the values of this list inside this list we have written a logic if the item is equal equal 3 then just use this break keyword and if you are using the break keyword then the execution will come outside of this loop it means after displaying one or two item which is this value and this value because at the third we are using this break keyword so we will get this end message none of them will be executed again let's just run this application and here you can notice we are getting one two and this end message is written two times because here it is written two times and if you remember the concept of that switch case over there we were also using this break keyword after every case and now i hope that you can also relate to that break keyword in the switch case statement very well now let's talk about our string values so let's just comment all these things enable that last end message and over here let's deal with this for loop concept and this time we are dealing with this name so what is the requirement so let's say if it is equal equal space then i just want to break let's run this program here you can notice we are getting only two characters n and i because after this i i have added one space like this and if we are having the space then the execution will come outside this particular loop and none of the rest conditions will be executed so this is the main use of this break and the continue keyword so this is the main use of this break and the continue keyword